Good afternoon, boys and girls. Miss Christy here with RC Kids. I am so excited to get to share another message with you guys this Sunday from the comfort of our own homes. Um, we're going to get started today but with a word of prayer. So I would ask for you to please bow your heads and close your eyes and join in with me. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you have given us. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that we have today to get together, even if it is from our homes, to learn more about your word, Lord, and to learn more about the perfect gift that you gave us, your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you open our hearts as we listen to your word so that we can better understand. I ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls. Today we are going to be talking about how Jesus has victory over death. Okay, and um, our Bible verse is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we get into our Easter lesson, into this um, story about Jesus' resurrection, we're going to be reading from our Bibles, from John chapter 19 and 20. Okay, we will get started with John chapter 19, verses 16. And in these two chapters of the book of John, we're going to be reading about an epic battle between good and evil. Do I have your attention? I hope so. All right, so if you have your Bible, you may join us as we read. Again, that is John chapter 19. I'm going to start with verse 16. Finally, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, into four equal parts, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. The garment was seamless woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened so that scripture might be fulfilled. Near the cross, uh, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to, to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had, um, excuse me, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the bodies taken down. <clears throat> One of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear. This also happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. 
He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visit Je visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it in with the spices in strips of linen. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Jesus had died for our sins. That means he died for the things that we've done wrong. When Jesus died, it got dark, even though it was daytime. It was in the afternoon and everything just went dark. Now imagine if this was it. If this was the story, Jesus had died, um, our, our sins were still our sins, Okay, imagine if Jesus could not do anything about sin and death. Think about what we would have lost if this were true. We would have lost our hope. We would have lost heaven. We would have lost forgiveness. We would have lost joy. I wonder if Satan thought that he had won that day. I wonder if, if he thought that death had had the victory. You know, Jesus' own friends thought that the story was over. They, they had lost. It seemed like evil had won this epic battle we talked about earlier. It seemed like evil had killed God. But the story does not end there. Jesus' friends may not have understood it at the time. Satan may not have known it, but Jesus had a surprise up his sleeve. So if we go back to our Bibles, and we, we go back to where we were reading. Um, John chapter 20, verse 1 says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Now, the stone was rolled away because the tomb could not hold Jesus. Death could not hold Jesus. The story was over, that it was, but Jesus had won. God wins, so that means that we have victory over sin and death. When we believe in Jesus, we are part of the winning team. If we go back to scripture, John chapter 20, verse 3, it says, So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen laying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was lying, was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Thinking that he was the gardener, since they were in a garden, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. So when Jesus called Mary's name, that is when she realized that he was not the gardener, that he was Jesus, God's son.
the end of this story shows us that he is alive. That is something to cheer and shout from the rooftops. He has won. It is because of Jesus that we can celebrate today. Jesus beat evil. He beat death. He beat sin. God wins so that we may have victory over sin and death. What an important message today. It's one that I love sharing with you guys. It is an honor that I get to share it with you guys um, this year. I, I met with you guys last year also in person and that was very special. And I'm glad that I was able to do it this year, although it looks a little bit different this year since we're all at home. Um, boys and girls, to follow up with today's lesson, I sent some activities that you could do with your parents. I did them with Victoria and Michael. I did two kinds. I did the same activity two different ways. Since Victoria is a little bit older, I let her do some painting. Here is the picture that was sent home for you guys to color. And it has today's date and our Resurrection Sunday. And it has our Bible verse from 1 Corinthians. But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the cross says, he died for, but he has risen. So on this cross, it says he died for Victoria. I put a picture of Victoria, but he has risen. And in the other cross with Michael, another option that we did is that we wrote his name in the cross. And I know this might look a little bit messy, but that's okay, he did his best on it. And this cross says he died for Michael, but he has risen. And that is today's message. He has risen. He beat death and sin for us, boys and girls. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's lesson. We are going to wrap up in prayer and I hope you guys have a blessed Sunday. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving us the most perfect gift, the gift of your son, Jesus. It is because of him and through him that we have victory over sin and death. Lord, there is nothing that we can do that could ever thank you enough for giving us that gift, your one and only son. Lord, I pray that you are with us and our families this week as we continue to navigate this different kind of time in our country where we are spending more time at home with our families. Keep us safe, keep us healthy, and bring us back together next Sunday so that we can bring another message from your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Boys and girls, it's been a pleasure. I can't wait to see you again next week. Bye, guys.